to our spirit man in the morning. Lord, thank you for the zeal. Thank you, Lord, for the way you opened our eyes. Even the children that listened, their own eyes were opened to things. Father, we ask that you continue with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So, brethren, we've been looking at since yesterday, the contamination of all ages. And then by the grace of Elohim, we saw in the book of John chapter 2, from verse 12 to 17, in the book of Mark chapter 11, 15 to 19, and also in the book of Matthew chapter 21, verse 12 to 13. Same account. And then yesterday, the Lord took us through some beautiful scriptures And then this morning again, the Lord took us through knowing that, you know, Jesus said three things in there. The Bible says when he came in, into the, into the tabernacle, into the synagogue, he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and those and money changers sitting. And then he made a scourge of small cord. And drove them away. Amen. So by the grace of God, we've been able to look at what he saw in the temple. Those who sold oxen, sheep, and dove yesterday morning. This morning, the Lord has also helped us to continue with that teaching. To look at money changers. And then we looked at in our present day time, who are the money changers? And this, and we asked yesterday, where were the priests when these money changers came in, into the church? Where were the um, scribes? Where were the Pharisees? Where were the um, what did the um, the lawyers? Where were all those people in the? Where where were they to allow this to happen in the church? But we can't answer that question because we don't know if they are the ones doing the buying and the selling. We couldn't also answer that question. All we could see is that from the account, they were all busy going after Jesus to pick out something, to accuse him, to persecute him. So they left the house to persecute Jesus. Then the traders came in. Whatever happened, And then we looked at this morning again. I won't go back to it. Please go back to our message of this morning and look at what trading represents in the present day. And there are many, many more. They are inexhaustible of different kind that we've seen happening in our churches today. Different ways people are exchanging money. And then one of these things, you know, maybe in few bits that exchanging money could meet. If you are a minister and you are planting churches just in the bid to increase your revenue, you're a money changer in the church because the initial or the actual motive was not to preach the gospel, but to increase. If you also are in ministry and then you preach, give five, give God five and get ten, you're a money changer changer you're a tax collector in the church so there's no need you know going there and it's not only the people that you know are all there if you go to church to um give out your business card you're a money what changer if you go to church to get down lines you're a money changer if you go to church just for business prospects Oh, you hear there are a thousand people in that church and you join them so that you can sell and then buy. You are a money changer. Whatever. You know, when you see them gathering in that crowd, I was taken to one in this country and I sat down there and nearly cried. Just after the fellowship, 10,000 members. What do you call it now? Cats. Um, complimentary cats were flying everywhere. People were making contacts. I said, what is going on here? The person that brought me said, Pastor Grace, you've seen nothing. This is us here. And yet they have a name that they leave it. But they are dead. I told us this morning, I went to one. Very three days revival service. 
that just shook everybody, including me, the preacher. On the last day, on Sunday, and then to, you know, what the Lord did among us was so wonderful that when we called on altar call for reconsecration, that was in 2005, the pastor was the first person to come out with a wife. So the whole congregation came out. It was a beautiful weekend, brethren. So when we finished and we're about to share the grace after the announcement, the announcement was going on. And look at this group of people trooping in. They just sat and I'm like there. What? Why did they come in when the message had finished? So in the innocence of my heart, I was praying for them. Lord, no, 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 this ought not to be. Satan has taken away the word that came today. I didn't know these are a group of traders. As soon as we shared the grace, oh, I came with original oil from Ijebu. I have gare. I have lace. I have um, kitchen. They were all talking. I was so shocked. I've never seen such a thing before. The pastor's wife said, come and see. They've already opened their boots. I know they won't do that in today's England. They will lose their things. The boots were all opened and they had pounded yam. They have all the market. They came to do what? Buy and uh, sell. So it's not only about the pastor. It's about the people. Why do you go to that church that they have 10,000 people? You are looking for what? Connection. Money what? Changer. So in different ways, people can change money. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And also, this morning, the Lord helped us to look at the book of Ezekiel to also see that he's, when the Lord took him up and lifted him in the spirit, that was the only time he could see what was wrong in the, in the tabernacle, in the church. He wouldn't have. And our takeaway from there is that in Ezekiel chapter 8, may the Lord lift us up so that we can see beyond the ordinary in Jesus' name. If not, you sit in that church, you see nothing. Oh, the pastor is so nice. He's so wonderful. Oh, God will bless you. Amen. He will get you 1,000. Amen. But you're dying and going to hell. May the Lord lift us up as he lifted Ezekiel to see beyond, to see the abominations that were going on. And then the Lord also helped us to look at, so that it wouldn't look like Pastor Grace is just, uh, we looked at the book of Ezekiel again, chapter 44, to now see where the Bible explains this in simple language. Amen. And this evening, there's another thing again, the Lord says there, and the Bible says, not only said to them, for my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. So let's just take that bit. And then pray today. And on Saturday, we will continue. So please, pick up the message of yesterday and today's morning. And then put all of them together as ministers of the living Elohim. These particular verses are so important to us. Amen. There's no way you will be in ministry without really understanding what Jesus did here. And if you're unable to do it in our own time. Stop whatever you are doing. Go back to the Lord in prayer and ask for grace. Because it's not everybody that has the boldness to do what Jesus did today. And actually every pastor, oh, pastor, did you see that? No, uh, don't condemn them. We are not here to condemn people. Who told you? Money changers in the church. Buyers and sellers of sheep and oxen in the church. And you say, oh, don't worry. Give them time. Give who time? The Bible says, and he made a whip of a cord and do what? chase them. If you don't chase them, they will corrupt the house of the Lord because they intend to corrupt it. They intend to pour cold water on it. They intend to make it look warm. They intend to make people not to grow. Jesus didn't say, oh, give them some time. They will come round. Come what? Do you know what they were doing? If you know what they were doing, let's look at the first place that the tabernacle was built. In the book of Exodus, the Lord took time to tell Moses what to do on the mountain. And that was just the very first. Because prior to that time, it was intense. As they were coming out, he took his time. He didn't waste it. And then teaching them what to do. And then when the Lord told them, and then says, look, I will come with you. 
I will be your God. When you're building it, get me Bezalel. He has the, he, he's got the craft. And when you are done, I will come and dwell. I will come and dwell from Exodus chapter 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. The Lord was talking about this tabernacle and the measurement, sheetings of gold and the the cherubs. And the Lord really took his time to align and says, this one shall be hallowed unto me and I will come there to meet you. That's what it is. And what are these people doing? How can you come to church and it doesn't touch you? And you come in into the church in the presence of the Lord, you are gossiping. Is it because we don't see him again? It wasn't like in the time of the Old Testament. How can you come into the church and you're sowing discord among brethren? Is it because we don't see him again? Are we not afraid? Do we think is this four walls again? In his presence, how can you come to church and you have a malice against another brother, another sister, you don't say hello to them, you don't greet them, it's all that. How can? It's not possible, brethren. And then how can you come to church? You are not afraid to stand on the altar and you have the microphone talking in the altar of the Lord when actually you're living in adultery and fornication. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. For you now to go to your walk, do you keep yourself naked? You dress well to go to walk. True or false? Then why do you think you will come to church half naked and expect us to tolerate you? You can't do that. Why? Why? Brethren, are you seeing that? So there are things that are licentiousness and not liberty. Sorry. (coughs) There are things you cannot If you can't do it while going to work, if you can't do it when you're going to visit dignitaries, why do you think it it should be allowed in the church? And then you're waiting for a pastor to say, oh, don't condemn me. Who is condemning you? You condemned yourself at home before you came. Brethren, the Lord used what? A cord. The things we see in our churches today, Jesus is to come presently. He will weep all churches will be closed. To be closed down. Says my house shall be called an house of what? Prayers. And the Bible says when the Lord was coming down, there were thick cloud. Amen. Thick cloud covering everywhere. And while he came down, they saw it, they shivered. So, brethren, the question now is, as a minister of the living God, are you happy? Will you ever chase the money changers out? Let's make his house a house of prayers, a house of praise. I was glad when they said to me, come to the house of the Lord. Amen. I was glad when they said, it's a place that we worship the Lord. It's a place we exalt his name. It's a name we lift his name high. That's what the church is. In his presence, there is fullness of what? Joy. In his mountain, there is what? Deliverance. You can't come and go back the same. Hallelujah. He dwells in the praises of his people. Hallelujah. It's a praise we come, brethren, to worship and to exalt and to reverence him. Amen. Look at today's worship. It was awesome. Hallelujah. It was what? Awesome. That's what it is. In liberty. You don't come to church to put the brother to to sin or the sister to sin. Anybody you lead to sin, you're in trouble. Because Jesus says, anyone that will lead any of these young ones to sin, is better what? A millstone is tied on his neck and is thrown into the ocean. So when you are coming and you want to make a sister to sin, or a brother to sin, or to copy you, especially, I get angry with the older ones. When you go, you are now older. Do you understand? And you are doing things you want the younger ones to do. If the younger ones follow you and do what you are doing, nothing will chase you but something will chase them. Do you know that? A lot will chase them. 
They are there trying to get away from peer pressure, trying to go away from all the flies around the school and in the community. You, the older one, wants them to do what you are doing. That's why I say to people coming to school of ministry, I've got three girls, don't confuse them. Don't do what? Confuse them. Because they're seeing something at home. And when they come here, they're seeing another thing. Don't confuse my children. Not at all. No ailment. Do what you like, but don't confuse what? Them. Don't. And it's not only them. Our younger ones. That thing that you did, that is okay. Nobody will say hello to you because of your age. But if these younger ones do it, you, you've, been a, you've laid a stumbling block to them. So why don't we show them example in love? Knowing that what we go through is not. You can imagine me now. If I wear a mili and I'm walking, people will mock me because I'll be doing this, isn't it? And all they are seeing is um, contoured cows, 50 something that is not there anymore. With all the middle age all around me. And I'm trying to do this. If, I, if my 21 year old does that, what do you think will happen? Before she gets that six men after her, why will we do it? Let's love these children. Let's show them example. Hallelujah. Don't contaminate the house of the Lord. It should be a house of prayer. And if, you lo- if we love one another, let's, let's, let's look after ourselves. Amen? You, let's look after our brothers. Let's look after our sisters. Don't, make any, don't let anyone do what they shouldn't do because of you. It's also about that. Because you may say, it's, oh, it's me, it's me, it's me. And you carry all your things, all empty. And everybody is feasting, looking. And some who are not looking, you're keeping them uncomfortable. They want to turn left, they do their neck this way. They want to turn again, they turn away. By the time they finish the fellowship, they're having whiplash because you're sitting next to them. They don't want to look to the left. Because when they look, they see, they do their eyes this way. They look again. Next time, they will sit next to you. Isn't it, brethren? Pollution in the house. Let's not do it. It's not nice. Amen. Love, brethren. Love one another. If we love one another, we will do the right thing. But it's not only about that. Talking in the church, when you say the things you ought not to, so, to say, you don't know what those people have been through in life. There are prayers that, Lord, lead me to the right place. Lord, this, you don't know. Maybe for 15, 10 years they've been praying. And as soon as they came where, he says, ah, here come this bird with satanic whisper to come and whisper into their ears. And one, two seconds, that brother has left to find no peace again on life. On the last day, you, you will answer. Please, brethren, let's not pollute the house of the Lord. Amen. So today we looked at all those red, yellow, white, handkerchief and all those things. But um, we know that the Lord, by his grace, and will keep us away from that in Jesus' name. So brethren, house of prayer and praise, not money changers, not boot sell, not fashion parade, not enterprising firm, not financial companies. Be careful what you do in the house of the Lord as a minister. Hallelujah. Please, the Lord has committed this into your hands. Remember that Satan will come. Look, for those who came into it intentionally, there are a different case. But the case I'm worried about are those who came with a pure heart, but they are very ignorant. Did you see that? Those who came with a pure heart, but they are what? Ignorant. And the Bible says, my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. So inside their heart, they are well-meaning brethren. They just love the Lord. But then they are ignorant of the truth. So Satan will come to corrupt. And how does that happen? These brethren, out of their zeal, we say, oh, Paul says to Timothy, follow me as the Corinthian Christians, follow me as I follow Christ. What do they do? They look at these older ministers. And these children, these younger ministers, are busy copying them. The way they talk. Have you seen younger ministers minister? <laughs> if you look at them, you know who they are copying immediately. Even when they pull their trousers here, you know who they are copying. 
You know who they are copying when they stand on the large side, God, red, red, red. you know who they are copying. Immediately. And the ladies are something else. The women are something else. When they stand on the stage and stand, wah, 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 you know who they are copying. You don't copy anyone. You are bespoke. You are perfect. Nobody will do it better than you. And that's why the Lord had called you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody will do it better. And the Lord has called you. So if you live the way the Lord had called you, and then you try to do it in another person's way, you will miss it. Won't you miss it, brethren? You will definitely miss it. Please don't miss it. You are the best. Hallelujah. That message in your hand, in your mouth, you are the only one to preach it. So don't corrupt it at all. Don't copy anyone. Don't say Sister A is doing it, then I have to do it. Oh, don't say oh, all of them that had 10,000 churches. I took my, you know, when I see young ministers flip through the television at channels, what are they looking at? They are looking at backdrop, what it is. They are looking at the flashlight. Wah, wah, wah. So somebody is preaching and then light is going off. Brethren, do you know in the corporate world, when presentations are going on, there is no disturbance, there's no distraction. Even the content, these days, there is now a standard for presentations. You know, when you put up your slice on a PowerPoint, it is no more allowed for what do you call it now in animations to come in and they zoom out. Because some people are dyslexic. Some people, it can distract them. So the national standard right now is you just press it and it works out. No distraction. Nothing. And this is the corporate world. And then you come to church. Red, green, blue. Wow. Phew. Fear. This way, you don't know whether you're watching. You don't know what you're doing. There's no reverence to our father anymore. Brother, what is happening? house of prayer that should that's the way you decorate the house of the Lord if you want to okay, flowers are expensive so it's not like them, um, it's cheap go and buy beautiful ones clean, serene simple so that when people come in there on the floor praying, calling upon him now you come to the church, you, go, 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 go. you don't know. We went somewhere and the children were like, how did they, how, how are they standing here? The noise from the PA system. And actually the lead choir person had an earpiece. The children said to me, look mom, he had an earpiece. That's where he got it. Noise. People now use noise. House of prayer. When you come into the house of the Lord, you come with a burden. You come with expectation. You came to meet with him. It calls for saying, Father, that's the reason why I come. You will be like Hannah. You know, when people come to church and they are making noise, I said they, they have no need. If you have a need, like Hannah, you just sit in one corner and be babbling like a drunkard. You have no time for anyone. When really you are in need, you don't care whether you wear slippers to church or not. When really you are in need, brethren, you don't really bother. Your heart is out there. You came to meet with the Lord. And the Lord will meet us in the name of Yeshua. So brethren, and today we looked at when you come to church and you are leaving the church, how do you feel? I want to ask us that practical question. Do you feel like nothing happened? Or you go home and we ask you, what was the topic today the pastor preached? Oh, the service was wonderful. That's fine. Can we know what he said? It was awesome. I said, oh, what he was said? Oh, the choir sang very well. I still ask him, what did he say? And you've told me nothing. So you didn't get anything. Do we continue going to such a place? I can't see anything wrong, but you're not growing spiritually. You are not as, as you know, appreciating anymore. It shall be called an hands of prayer. The question is in these days. We may not see physical people to chase out. But there are practices in the church that we shouldn't allow anymore. Hallelujah. Ministers, do you agree with me? There are big, huge things 
We shouldn't allow. You may be unpopular, don't worry. You may be left with only 12 disciples, don't worry. It's not about the number. That 12 will turn the world upside down. Hallelujah. Christ was left with only 12. So why would you bother with, oh, this place is not growing. Growing to where? We're growing to where? Be diligent to look after it. Remember, the Bible says that the, the servant that knows the will of the master but do not do it shall be beaten with many stripes. Brethren, we can go on and on and on to talk about a house of prayer. The house of the Lord should be hallowed in the physical when you're coming. Yes, it's true that our father do not live in the, ha- in the house built with hands anymore because our body is now the temple. Also look at this temple. What do you do to this temple? What do you do to this temple? Do you buy and sell in this temple? You know all these things are all there. Do you, what do you feed this temple? And what do you put on on this temple? How do you look after this temple? Both physically and spiritually. A lot of people don't really care. They don't really care. They put on things that harm them. They eat things that harm them. They expose this body to things that shouldn't be exposed to. And then tomorrow this will come. The other one will come. The other one will come. Look after this body. Spiritually, it's now a house of prayer. How is this heart? Is it a house of prayer? The Bible says that men ought always to pray and not to do what? Faint. In everything, in prayer and in what? Thanksgiving. Prayer without what? Seizing. Have we made this house and house of prayer? Prayer is not only when you have six hours to pray. Then you said, I have prayed. No, you can live a praying life. Amen. Hallelujah. A praying life. And when you live a praying life, you don't have time to... <laughs> Do you see what happened to church today? Say yes. That... that, that uh, Jacket Pastor Grace was wearing. <laughs> Who knows? I like it. Oh. It looks nice on her. Eh? You wouldn't have time. Brethren, when you wake up in the morning, London is a busy place. And then you just give God praise. Because you're in the mood of prayer, there's not, the time to pray in the morning is not enough. Because when you sleep late, you don't wake up. Because your heart is burdened. And you get up and you just sighed. Because you didn't finish your prayer. As you're getting into the car, you start the prayer. Father, I thank you. I give you praise. As I'm going now, Lord, you drive this car. You be with me. Your glory. Father, I'm going to that office. Oh, no. Ah, yesterday, it was horrible. Father, in the name of Jesus, I arrest everything in the spirit. Lord, take control. Father, Lord, today there will be quiet. Oh, it's true. Ah, that meeting. Ah, ah. I'm going to. Father, in the name of Jesus, this has been a problem in the office. Today, sort it out in Jesus' name. As you're going there, you see, pa, pa, pa. you look, see, uh, uh, where is this man coming from? Father, rest him. He will not go into any accident. He will not kill anybody. That spirit of death, I arrest you in Jesus' name. As you're going, you go there, look at the billboards. You say, what is this one? This has not been the Thou wicked billboard, nobody will see you. Thou naked woman, you are gone. In... By the time, it's like, it's your life. Hallelujah. It's your what? Life. By the time you come back, you have prayed for nearly five hours. And your spirit man is charged. You're in the toilet to wee. You say, Father, I'm flushing out. All this nyama nyama in the office, I'm flushing you all out. There will be quietness here in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you're coming, you anoint every table. Brethren, it's like, it's your what? Life. The phone rang. Hey, hey, it's the children. Oh, oh. Who is that? Mom, it's me. In the name of Jesus. You're praying. Do you understand? Oh, I've lost my Oscar card like a light. We can't forget that. How many times he loses his Oscar card. So what do you do now? I don't know what to do. So I say, Father, provide a help. <laughs> Mom, I don't know what to do. Get onto the bus. Father, as I'm praying now, as he gets onto the bus, they will allow him. Amen. Mom, I'm in the bus. It just. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. My house shall be called what? A house of prayer. You don't take anything for granted. It consumes you. And by the time you finish in the evening, you're ready to finish the rest, isn't it? 
And he says, oh, it's true. That was, was okay. He says, oh, it's not true. You've done a half of them. Then you are saying, okay, one more thing. Lord, you start praying for all the, by the time you finish praying for all the brethren, you have no time to pray for yourself. And then the Lord will look after you. I prefer that one. No? Amen. I say, Lord, let me take praying for the brethren and you do my own. We strike a deal. You need to start striking deal with the Lord. Okay, Lord, let me do this one. You do this one then. He says, okay, you go. It's a beautiful relationship. It's a beautiful time. It gives us joy. My house shall be called a house of what? Prayer. Amen. So that you will be aware when something is jumping in. You say, excuse me, where are you coming from? Who is this stranger in my house? Walk away. Amen. So it doesn't matter how people even offend you. Yes, the, best, the Bible says offenses will come. But you won't allow it to stay. You're battling it because it's a stranger. And it does what? It goes. My house shall be called house of what? Prayer. So either spiritually or physically, brethren, let's make this house. And imagine when you are praying. Hey, do you know what you're doing? You are continually in his presence. Do you know the advantage of that? He will show you everything. He won't hide anything from you. Because you're in his presence looking. So anything that goes, what? You say it. It goes this way, you say it. You will know the flock. Because the Lord will open your eyes to see. The Lord will tell you deep, deep things. Because you're always in his presence. He's going to show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Hallelujah. And that's our father. But when you are afar off, then you need to warm yourself before you can come. But when you're always in, that, in his presence, you don't need to warm up, isn't it? All you need is, you know the button to press. Because you've been there a long time, you know the way. You know where it is. People might be looking for the outlet to put on the light. Even in darkness, you know where to do what? Put it on. Because you are always there. May the Lord help us in ministry to always be there in Jesus' name. And remember, we also need to ask the Lord for the grace to remain here. If not, at the end of the day, we don't want him to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I do not want you. We don't want to be like the pastors in the book of Jeremiah chapter 23, who do not see, who don't know, who led others astray. So brethren, remember, physically, as we gather together, the house is where we should speak to one another in psalms and in hymns. The house should be where we should be in one accord. The house should be where when we all come together, we will break bread from house to house with our heart together. The house should be where we should not have any division among us, but we should mind the same thing, speak the same thing. And a house is where we will come, and then when we gather, you know, when the Lord, when Solomon was able finally to put up a structure for the Lord that is not tent anymore, he prayed a powerful prayer. And when he finishes, the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer. And look at what I'm going to do. If we want our prayers to be heard, brethren, make sure that where the children of God congregate is an holy assemble. Tell the people they will do it. Amen. But when you don't tell them, they will not do it. And ask the Lord to open your eyes also to see. Because anywhere children of God gathers, who also gathers? Satan will also do what? Come. And the Lord will say, what are you doing here? He says, I'm walking to and fro. He will steal. So don't say we have got it right here and relax. Watch out. Watch and do what? Pray. And then sometimes brethren may do it ignorantly, nicely pull them what? Aside. And deliver such an one. I said, do you know what you're doing? He said, yes, it will bring division in the house. What you're doing will not make this an house of prayer. Because if people are not happy, if we say amen, not everybody will say amen because they are not happy. So brethren, let's make, when the Lord gives you an opportunity to, to preach, 
to minister or for those of us who are pastors here, make sure that the tabernacle of, tabernacle of the Lord is where the Lord can come in. Amen. Is where he can do what? Come in. And you, if you can't see whether he can come in or not, read Ezekiel chapter 8 and ask the Lord to lift you up and open your eyes so that you can see. Encourage the brethren. Let's hallow our father. Let's exalt his name. And when it's time for prayers, brethren, let us do what? Pray. You know, our dream here, which I know the Lord will do for us, and that's where the enemy has not really fighting back because God has defeated. At the appointed time, God will give us a place of worship. Amen. We are getting there. And people will come and see what an house of prayer is. Amen. Amen. People should come, run into the church from work. Instead of going home, they only come in the church to come and cross their legs as Dr. Ben is sitting. Just to relax for an hour. Not to pray, but to enjoy his what? Presence. And go home. That's what that building should be doing. People should be able to leave their beds and come just to lie in the church. Not to pray. That by the time I wake up from here, this pain and this growth, you will dry up. Because you can't stay in the presence of the Lord. People should be able to come to church. And there's a big fridge and they can open and pick up food and they eat. And go to the pew and lie down and sleep because they are in the presence of Elohim. It's the best place to bring peace. Hallelujah. People should be able to run from home and run into the church. Go to the altar and lie flat and say, Lord, here am I. It's only you that can deliver me. Is I run into your temple before there is no other way. Should people should be able to do that only to come into the church? There's just the beautiful hymn going. Their spirit man is healed. They just cross their leg and listen and listen. That's what the church should be. And then when we all gather together, what a glorious day! Hallelujah. What a glorious day. As people are trooping in, there's hugs and kisses. There is rejoicing. Then the song starts. Wow. Wow. We loosen up and put up, cast our crown on the floor for him. And dance and rejoice. And that presence remains in the house. Hallelujah. Those who are not born again are coming in. Just coming in with no, with, even without preaching. They are what? They are, they are touched. He says, I, can't, I can't, can't tell, but there's something about this place. Hallelujah. It's not about the building, but the people. Amen. So brethren, please, all of us, all ministers, everyone, old and young, preachers, apostle, um, prophet, evangelist, teacher, and um, pastor. Amen. All of us, deacons, Everyone, choir member, everyone. When the Lord says you should come and minister, know it that you're a minister. That your singing do not make you anything less. You are ministering in song. You're the pastor, our song pastor that day. I don't know about all of you. Song have changed my life. And you all know it. Because all the hymns are, comes from me. And now I've transferred it to the children. It flows. It healed me. It encouraged me. I will be going on the street. I'll be singing and tears will be welling up. Some of them I feel like flying. There's some people who will sing. After singing, you don't need the preacher to preach. It's enough. It's what? Enough. All through the week is that song. You wake up in the morning, that song. Tuesday, that song. Wednesday, the same song. And you are, and you want to know the words. Beautiful. We want to get back to that. In the name of Jesus. Tell yourself, I am standing in the altar of Elohim. If he comes right now, will he accept my sacrifice? And as a pastor, you ask yourself, as a minister, Lord, I will stand in your presence. When thou come, will I be found faithful? And when you have this, tell the people the benefits of sanctity in the house of the Lord. Everybody will keep it. Hallelujah. Joyfully, they will embrace it. 
But not when church comes, oh, what does it matter? Oh, in our church, we have liberty. What liberty? We have liberty. We do what we like. Oh, we don't want them to cage us. We don't want them, the Ekei came 2,000 years ago ministry. Well, I still want the old rugged cross. Hallelujah. I don't want the new plastic cross. Keep it to yourself. The old plastic, the old rugged cross is heavy. It's not light, but I'm happy. Amen. It's not fashionable. I am happy. Amen. It's rugged. I am what? Happy. It's heavy. The Lord will send uh, um, Siren, uh, Simon of Siren to help me carry it. Amen? Amen. And I will get there in Jesus' name. It will never crush anybody. May the Lord help us. Remember, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Let's make God's house. And then when you make God's house a house of prayer, you, you honor it. Amen. You honor it. Both in the physical, all way two or three are gathered in my name, you will take it. Brethren is the thing, but let's not allow Satan to take it away. I know there's a lot of corruption out there. A lot, a lot, a lot. Hey, brethren, a lot. You know what I'm talking about. So it's not about this physical cutting. It's not about how much we dressed here. What did the Bible say in the book of um, um, Ezekiel we read this morning? It says the people have put their back at my tabernacle and their face facing the sun eastwards. May that not be a portion. In Jesus' name, when we come, he is waiting. He wants to embrace us. He wants to bless us. He says, when I come, you will be my people and I will be your God. Amen. I will quench your test. I will shield you. I will help you. I will be with you. Before you cry, I have heard you. Before you open your mouth, I have already answered. Amen. The water will not swallow you. The fire will not consume you. I am the Lord God of hosts. Turn unto me and I will turn unto you. That's what he's asking us. Inviting us into his house. But Satan wants the corruption of that house so that the Lord will put his back at us. May it not happen in the name of Jesus. But most important prayer is for us. Amen. The ministers. Father, give me the boldness of Jesus. Help me not to tolerate again what ought not to be. If I can't influence them, what am I doing there? I walk away. Nicely, quietly. And where you can influence them, you tell them the truth. Hallelujah. May the Lord help. Father, we thank you this evening. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord, because... When we sit down, if we will sit down and dwell on the house of prayer, it's a huge, huge, big topic. But tonight, let the Holy Spirit finish the rest. Go with us. In the individual homes, when we are praying, even all through the week, open our eyes to the enormous things that house of prayer represents. To all the scriptures and Father get us to the point that we will reverence you. Whether we are on our own as your living temple or we have gathered two or three together or we have assembled ourselves together to pray. May we have the consciousness that you are in our midst. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And amen.